rise of kingdoms is five years old i can't believe that it's been around for that long and if you go over to your markswoman you'll be able to find out the exact moment that you started playing rise of kingdoms even the time you get markswoman within the first like five minutes of playing the game so i have been playing this game for nearly five years now which is actually insane my poor markswoman has been sitting at level 10 for five years and since this is such an important anniversary i wanted to make this video sharing with you guys 10 things that i would love to see happen in rise of kingdoms moving forward and also five things that i really hope that they never do but first what's going on guys cheers we got the 64 ounces of water over here or it could be tequila you never know guys before we jump in i just want to remind you that i am doing a giveaway for the month of august august is almost over so there's going to be a link in the description below click that link all you have to do is follow me on all social media platforms that is literally it it's that simple you'll be entered to win a hundred dollars so what you waiting for it's literally free go ahead and do it okay jumping into the list of things that I want to see in rise of kingdoms we're gonna start with Ethelfled and in particular I think that Ethelfled has been around a little bit too long in the expedition shop you know what's really weird there's no eye here I actually can't see the stats for my Ethelfled that is super weird look my Tsao Tsao doesn't have it my Mehmed does have it my YSG does have it most commanders do have it some of the early game ones apparently don't have it I don't know why if that's a bug please let me know but Ethelflaed has been in the expedition shop for literally years now she wasn't here when the game first launched if I remember correctly but she's been here probably for at least like four years of the five that rise of kingdoms has been around and I think it is time for her replacement now I have been an advocate for this for years, literally years. We have needed a replacement for Ethelflaed. Now, what I'm recommending is not to replace her for everybody, but only for players who have her expertise. And look, I would love if they put a brand new legendary commander here, but it doesn't even have to be that difficult. They could literally just replace Ethelflaed with the option to choose sculptures for any of the gold key commanders. I think that this would be completely fair. And also maybe they could lock this behind season of conquest. Once you get into season of conquest, these commanders really aren't that relevant anyway, but I would still much rather be working on them as opposed to Ethelflaed, who I literally have no use for. And I haven't had a use for her in literally years. Her sculptures are literally useless. Okay. I have 866 of them and sure I could get 4.3 million Alliance credits here, but I already have 48 million. Okay. Uh, I don't actually have anything to do with my Alliance credits. Regardless, we have very few things in the shop that I even care about. Like sure. The teleports, those are nice. They're fine. And yes, the passport pages are cool, but I'm not planning on leaving my kingdom. And also I don't really need that many civilization changes. So there's really nothing for me to do with my 48 million credits anyway. So what am, why, why would I even trade these in? What am I even doing with these? It doesn't even matter. I really don't think replacing Ethelflaed with a gold key commander of the players choosing would really move the needle at all in terms of how much players are spending on the game in terms of how quickly players gain power. But I think this could be a way for new players to catch up to older players who already expertise a lot of the gold key legendaries a while ago. I have Tao Tao expertise. I have Martel expertise. I have Mehmed expertise. I have Julius Caesar expertise and I have all the gatherers expertise as well and the others that I don't have expertise are really close to it and I think that there's also an opportunity here to expand the expedition as sort of a, a way of adding in something new here we have had this dotted line from level 80 over to this castle on the map for literally years and we haven't seen an update to expedition since they added the rally and garrison levels which was quite a while ago you're telling me the boss of expedition is a Genghis Khan that is extremely outdated and on top of that there would be an opportunity here to maybe add some variety with the new ranged combat ranged combat is new and is not seen at all anywhere in expedition at least from the enemy perspective so perhaps they could add some levels that utilize the ranged feature I think Think that that could be kind of cool but even if they don't do that even if they just add you know five more levels leading to the castle and if you complete it maybe you unlock the ability to change the sculpture 
I think that would be insane. The second thing on my wish list for Rise of Kingdoms moving forward is a better new player experience with regards to transitioning to the end game. I think that since they changed season of conquest commanders to kvk3 commanders i think that that does help a little bit but if you take a look at my recent guides where i talk about you know being a cavalry main or an infantry main or an archer main a lot of those guides start with me recommending that you expertise ysg and then waiting until season three of kvk to do anything else and that is between seven and nine months of basically doing nothing and i think that that is a really bad new player experience the alternative to that is to tell players to invest in commanders that really aren't that great in the long run like alexander the great for example now in the past alexander the great was an excellent investment and some players do still use him and swear by him but really his his time has come and passed and even the investment in ysg is something that you have to take with a grain of salt because he's clearly outclassed by duo leong in the late game right so really there's no good method for new players to transition into end game and also you know be able to compete with the players like myself who have been playing the game for literally five years and i've had time to expertise all these commanders over time as i gain access to them they have access to all the same commanders all at the exact same time and i think that that is a big problem so i think that there needs to be some early game investment for these new players that they can make with confidence knowing that they're going to have something that is adjacent to the meta when they land in season of conquest and it has to be more than just ysg okay he's great but we need something a little bit more now one of the things that i'm going to recommend here is perhaps a way to transition from epic commanders to legendary prime versions okay uh now if you take a look there is a new trust feature that they released in the latest update and i think this this new feature is quite good i think it's very very cool and i do like it uh there could be an opportunity here to kind of integrate the trust system with an adjacent method to progress that commander towards a prime version so for example with Joan of Arc here we have the trust system for the epic version and then we have the prime version of her there could be uh, in my mind a way to link the two versions okay I think a lot of new players get confused when they start the game and they see that I have a legendary Joan of Arc and they think that there's some way that you can convert your epic Joan of Arc into the legendary and there isn't but perhaps there should be and I think that this would be uh you know a good way and I'm not saying to give everybody her for free right those of us that spent you know hundreds of thousands of gems on the wheel and stuff like that don't want to feel like everyone else is just getting a handout for free but I think that there could be an opportunity here to you know if you max out the trust level of your epic Joan of Arc perhaps they give you you know 60 sculptures of legendary Joan of Arc so that way you can at least get her first skill to five you can at least summon her you can get the pop-up bundle for her and then you don't have to spin her wheel just to get her unlocked you can spend those gems somewhere else I think that that would be completely fair and why stop there maybe they could give you know 100 sculptures 180 sculptures whatever the case might be to sort of ease the progression from early game to season of conquest right because I do still think that there's a massive gap and just telling players oh well you should just hoard your legendary commander sculptures for eight months and then spend them all on you know a legendary of your choosing when you get to kvk3 like that's not a great experience it's not very fun it really is the best advice that us old players can give new players uh which is kind of disheartening for them they feel like they're just going to be playing for months and months and months and just saving and by that point there could be new commanders in the game anyway right so i really think there needs to be a system that gets these new legendaries in the hands of new players a lot sooner than waiting nine months of doing nothing and hopefully they can integrate that with the trust system and the prime system i think that would be the most logical starting place because these prime commanders are already familiar to the new players because they have epic variants and they're also simultaneously some of the most powerful legendary commanders in the late game as well so it's kind of a win-win in my book the third thing on my wish list has to do with prime commanders as well and that is new prime commanders okay I enjoy prime commanders and I even made a video recently talking about the fact that it's been almost a year since we saw Joan of Arc prime come into the game that is actually insane uh, and I do think that we probably will be seeing three at least three new prime commanders uh, in this year okay from now until August of next year 2024 I think we'll probably see at least 
three new prime commanders that's my prediction I really hope that that is the case and for me I would love first of all to see Sun Tzu prime I think everybody wants to see this he is so dominant in the early game and players love him and also he is a uh, you know a commander from history that is recognizable around the world he is one of the most recognizable historical figures in all of rise of kingdoms and the fact that he is locked as a epic commander is really not doing him a, a service right i think that he really deserves to be a legendary i think everybody wants it it makes a lot of sense but beyond that i would love to see kusunoki prime i think that we need more samurais in the game i've been saying this for for a long time we need more ninjas in the game okay uh, and I think that he looks awesome. I think he is a really, really cool design. And I would love to see Kusunoki as a legendary prime commander. Beyond that, I would also love to see Osman prime. I think that he has historically one of the highest single target damage factors in the epic tier, as well as the sword of Osman, which just pops an additional damage. I think that he has this, uh, this vibe about him where he's just like, he pops off. Okay. He means business. And I would love to see him as a prime commander. And finally, by bars I would love to see by bars as a prime specifically as an AOB cavalry I know that most primes don't share the same talent trees or actually all primes have different talent trees than their epic counterparts but I would love to see uh, by bars come in as either cavalry leadership something like that that also does a five target AOE that just is like really makes him feel like the father of conquest, which they call him here in the game. Fourth on my wish list is the release timing for legendary commanders. Now, a lot of players recently have been saying that the release cycle for legendaries has felt too fast and it actually hasn't been. If we take a look at Zhuge Liang, right? Uh, I was able to get him on day one, May 22nd. I remember the day because we were in KVK and I got him to like five, 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 one, right away or five five one five or something like that on day one okay um I used him in KBK fighting. It was awesome. Then we take a look at Huo Chi Bing, and you could see that I got him on day one as well on July 31st. Okay. So that is 10 weeks in between the acquisition of one from the other, which is 70 days and 70 days between legendary commanders is actually very standard that has been pretty much the the average between commanders if we take a look back in the day this information on my website is definitely outdated at this point but it kind of helps in this scenario because we can go back and see the time between different commanders and you could see between attila and leonidas uh was 56 days and that was pretty much the standard between different commanders because they would do I think it was four cycles of one commander and then and then switch to another commander type and so that's kind of how it used to go now we have the you know the different mightiest governors where you can choose your commander that you you have and so you know it goes from like cavalry to infantry and all that stuff right but back in the day that wasn't the case there was just one commander that you would get and you either got it or you didn't and here we see that it was 56 days in between that now that's not to say it was always 56 days because it wasn't um I remember when they were transitioning from season three to season of conquest I think we had Artemisia or like Theodora it was one of those um that was just like we had like five or six mightiest governor cycles seven mightiest governor cycles of the same commander it was kind of insane okay I think the longest we've gone without a new commander was like 100 days or 120 days something like that but really 70 days in between two new commanders is normal okay it's normal now you might be pointing to Pyrus and saying what about Pyrus Pyrus is a once a year thing once per year they release a new civilization which comes with a new gold key commander I don't consider gold key commanders uh you know that relevant to us late game players because they're just not something that you're going to be investing in so yes Pyrus was in the middle there but he in my mind just doesn't count because that is only going to happen once per year but the reason that this is even coming up in my wish list video is because I think 70 days is a little fast I would rather it be at least 84 days that's another two weeks in between okay uh, maybe a little longer than that I as a content creator love the fact that they're adding new commanders regularly in rise of kingdoms I think that it you know adds to the hype cycle it gives us new things that we can work on and new theory crafting and something to be excited about it's new toys okay uh, so I like that but I do feel the pain for the free-to-play players and also the players that are new to the game that are like oh my god there's a billion things to work on in season of conquest and kvk3 and i think every 70 days is a little fast okay it's a little fast i would say let's change that to 84 days at least uh and see how that feels from a player perspective and maybe make it a little bit longer as well and you know hopefully that will help a lot of people number five on my wish list is more variety with the new legendaries that they are implementing into the game specifically if i could pick 
two legendaries to put in rise of kingdoms hattori hanzo is top of the list i've been saying this for a long time we need ninjas okay more ninjas is better i think ninjas are awesome and i want to see them also vlad the impaler i've been saying this for a very long time he is basically dracula okay the historical version of it and i think that would be awesome like drop vlad the impaler in october for halloween and pff, bro that would be so sick okay these two commanders i are two that i would love to see in rise of kingdoms but beyond that we just need a greater variety of the legendaries that are coming into the game i think that we personally we see a lot of chinese commanders coming into rise of kingdoms which is fine i think the design for them is awesome but if you look at el cid and frederick this Elsid is the only to my knowledge and I, I double checked really quick I could be wrong but he's the only Spanish legendary and Frederick is the only German legendary I, am I right about that I, I'm pretty sure I'm right I, I scale I went through everything and I think that's accurate but like what is going on here you're telling me that there's only one Spanish figure worth putting in legendary tier and one German worth it and these are old these came out when the game came out these are five year old commanders we need new legendaries for the Spanish and Germany civilization and beyond that I also would like to see more like Aztec commanders like Moctezuma and more Mayan commanders like Pakal I think that these are sort of underrepresented historical cultures that I think would be cool to have more of in Rise of Kingdoms now there's even more to discuss right like of course we don't really have that many legendary Japanese commanders either like we have Minamoto and I'm pretty sure we have uh who's the gatherer right we have Ashida let's start to open it up to more cultures around the world and I think that that would be really cool especially for people who live in those countries I think it's really nice for them to see their culture represented in a game like rise of kingdoms that is all about kind of bringing all these cultures together under one title and I just don't see anything wrong with it so why not number six on my wish list is a greater variety of equipment now what I mean by this is not to power creep the equipment okay I'm not saying that we need more powerful equipment what I'm saying is that I would like just a little bit more variety okay for example if we take a look at the legendary tier and I want to put a legendary helmet on my infantry commanders okay we have the gold helm of the eternal wasteland we have the helm of the conqueror and that's it now you could say the diadem of the glorious goddess is technically an option because it's universal but really there's only two options you pick one or the other and one of them is clearly better right so like there's really no variety there there's no theory crafting there's no building a comprehensive set for any specific troop type and even farther than that uh, when you look at the different sets in the game there's mostly legendary sets there's only a single epic set and it's for archers for actual fighting obviously the forest guardian set doesn't count there is the windswept set and also the vanguard set but why can't we have an epic set for infantry or an epic set for cavalry i think that you know having those sets as a sort of stepping stone to progressing to the end game would be really good for new players right and i think that there's already decent epic gear that you can focus on as a new player as you progress to all legendary gear but really like I said there's really for any given slot whether it's gloves legs boots whatever there's really only two choices for every troop type there is the set piece and then there is the one that you would get from like the gold keys right and typically you're always going to pick the set piece so there's really no creativity here and I think that that's just there's an opportunity to add more legendary pieces more epic pieces right uh maybe that have different set bonuses maybe a set bonus that gives you uh, more rage right or, or just different different mechanics that you can you can implement and reward players for having a complete set I think that that would be really really cool and again it doesn't have to be power creep they don't have to have more stats than the other pieces but just maybe different stats different sets different things that you might want to work on you might consider to give players something else to think about right because I think that for years now we've kind of figured out what the best gear is and that's it we've kind of we've forgotten all the other pieces of the gear nobody cares about the rest of the gear in the game and that's kind of that's kind of unfortunate for a system that I really like I think the equipment system is fine yes I wish the special talent system was you know better for legendaries but beyond that like I like the equipment system it's better in my opinion than the armament system it's better than the crystal tech system so I really like it I would like to see more here number seven on my list I'm not going to spend too much time on but give us a way to choose our stats for armaments 
just do it I, the, the the transmutation system is not it's just not I don't like the gambling nature of this uh so please I just let us give us some way to spend transmutation stones to guarantee what we want that's that's just please like please please fix this number eight on my list is adding more lore to the world of rise of kingdoms I think that when you compare this game to like call of dragons for example the entire world has different uh, unique structures out in the map that are sort of you know related to the main story of the actual game and I would love to see more story driven things like that in rise of kingdoms obviously we're in the kvk map right now so it's a little different there is sort of a story to kvk the lost kingdom but I would like to just see more lore and story for the game and they've sort of already done this with the trust system there's just a new way to like talk to commanders and actually get their input on things and also they added the state forum which allows you to not only do dispatches but also to do the traveling where you actually have little cut scenes and things like that and there's some like actual in-game lore here and I, I do appreciate those things but I'd like to see a little bit more in the world of rise of kingdoms I feel like the trust system is a good step but it's not you don't have to do it you don't have to like engage with it at all there's no reason the rewards aren't like amazing right same thing with like the travel there's no reason to like care about this stuff here and the randomness of this system is just so uh, like I, I I don't really care right I just click through this button 20 times and then I go away but if they bake it into the progression of your account to the progression of your server I think that would be kind of cool number nine on my wish list is rebalancing the drop rate for gold keys I think that this is long overdue they did this I think once when they put Ragnar in the gold keys if I'm not mistaken or maybe it was Mulan uh they basically changed around the drop rate to compensate for the fact that you're going to be getting any one commander uh, a lot less than you would have when the game first came out for example if you really want Charles Martel uh you were better off opening gold keys when the game came out than you are right now because there's more commanders in the chest which means the probability of getting any one commander is actually going down okay uh, and I think that it's time for them to rework these rewards but beyond that it does seem to be the case that the gathering commanders appear more often okay that just seems to be the case I've watched a lot of gold key openings people opening thousands tens of thousands of gold keys here on YouTube and uh, it just seems to be the case that players get their gatherers more frequently and this is good for like early game free-to-play players who need these gathering commanders to progress their account more but in the late game like you don't care about these at all and you're eventually going to get a ton of them from the gathering choice chest which at this point I've saved up over 200 of them okay I have nothing to do with these there is nothing for me here and that is unfortunate so I think that they should retweak the drop rates for these uh, I know that they don't reveal the drop rates of the individual commanders I think personally I think that the gatherers do seem to drop more often perhaps they drop that down and increase the the probability of getting commanders that people actually care about specifically the newest commanders in the gold keys I think that that would matter a lot for players like me who've been playing for a long time they I want these and also I would make the argument that commanders like Pyrus commanders like Thutmos and Mulan are probably some of the most powerful commanders in the gold keys anyway when progressing in the season of conquest especially with their relics like Thutmose is quite good and Mulan has a really nice role in not only Canyon but also in Ark of Osiris right so they should tweak this system to actually reflect what would benefit the players in the long run because as it stands right now gold keys to me are basically silver keys I, I there's really no difference in my mind uh from silver keys and gold keys because the the rewards are just not they don't mean anything to me they're actual like trash basically and that's a bummer especially for new players who might actually get some use out of these commanders if they could actually get them right uh another thing that they could do is once you expertise a commander just remove it from the probability table right like wh why am I still getting sculptures of, of Cleopatra like come on here like what are we doing right what what are we doing I, I don't understand this it makes no sense to me I really think a rework here is desperately needed and the last thing I want to mention here and this I say this for last because it is the one that I think is the least likely to occur uh and would require the most effort from the developers but I would love to see uh the game engine updated I don't even know if that's possible I'm not a game developer I don't know anything about that but now that we've seen what the developers are capable of with Call of Dragons in terms of the graphics in terms of the animations in terms of you know world building and storytelling and all that it really feels like Rise of Kingdoms is lacking and it's really starting to show its age it is five years old at this point this game came out around the same time that like 
Fortnite came out okay so we're talking about a game that is older than Genshin Impact we're talking about a game that has been around for a while and it has stood the test of time and really like are the graphics a deal breaker no definitely not I think there's something nice about the simplicity of the graphics uh in Rise of Kingdoms that makes it very easy to understand for new players and players who have been playing for a while but I really would much prefer the game look and feel like Call of Dragons I, I mean let's just be honest like it's just better okay it's just better and also I feel like the actual coding of the game is better in terms of like lag latency things like that uh it just feels more smooth in Call of Dragons and like the frame rates better like everything is better in Call of Dragons it just is okay and I would love to see Rise of Kingdoms get the same treatment and a lot of you might be thinking well okay well why don't you just play Call of Dragons but they are honestly quite different games I, I feel like a lot of like if you've never played Call of Dragons you might not feel that way or if you've only played the game for let's say a couple of days and then quit you might think that they're identical but they're not they're they're quite different games and I I mean I've been playing rise of games for years I don't want to have to switch to another game just to get an improvement in the graphical style and especially now that we have you know the dedicated PC client that has been around for a while the bugs have been ironed out for the most part I would love to see a game uh, engine upgrade I don't know if it's possible I know that's an insane amount of work but I think that it could be worth it and if the game looked updated if it looked fresh if it looked modern like Call of Dragons then there's a good opportunity or a good chance that more new players would try the game and old players would return to the game because it's basically rise of kingdoms 2.0 at that point it's essentially a sequel to the game and i think that that would be a really big selling point for getting players back that have quit over these past five years and i will say i know many players personally who have quit literally dozens and dozens and i get lots of comments as well from players who are saying that they gave up on the game and again a new engine while that would be you know so much work that it might not even be possible it also could be single-handedly the only thing that they could do to really entice old players to come back and try the game again now let's talk about my wish list for the five things that i absolutely do not want to see at all in rise of kingdoms over the next couple of years as the game continues to evolve number one on this list is tier six units absolutely not absolutely not that is a hard no that is a hard line do not add tier six the, the if you look at game of war fire age okay that is the perfect exa example they have like tier 50 units okay because that game has been around since 2013 uh absolutely not that is a slippery slope uh you absolutely lose the trust and faith of your community that things won't get power crept into oblivion it's already hard enough to get tier five units for new players they are already too expensive when it comes to healing that's my opinion I think it's way too expensive to heal and train tier five units they definitely should look into tweaking that again so please tier six units absolutely off the table definitely don't do this this would this would probably kill the game immediately so please 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 do not do it in the same vein as this uh a higher rarity of commander please legendary is hard enough to get for most players please do not include something higher than legendary don't implement like a mythic tier or anything like that like please just just leave it at legendary I think it's fine they're rare enough they're hard enough to get they're powerful enough I think we're good okay if you if you add a mythic tier that's going to be even harder for players to get their hands on those sculptures and again legendary commander sculptures are already rare enough in my opinion especially considering how fast they release new commanders it would just be impossible for anybody to keep up and it would it would basically kill the game in my opinion number three on the list of things that I do not want to see I do not want to see more technology and I absolutely do not want to see more crystal technology uh I think that again it already takes a long time to get to tier five units like we talked about before and if they add more crystal technology what would they do eight marches in the open field nine marches in the open field ten marches like no absolutely not that is just way way too much it's already hard enough for players to get seven marches it's already hard enough for people to flesh out their five March configuration I personally could benefit from a default change of five marches to six or even seven but I don't want that to happen I know most players are not in that position okay and I don't want to see that for the game uh but adding more crystal tech would just be oh my god that would be an absolute mistake please do not do that number four is please do not implement season resets okay this is a feature that is in call of dragons and I have found it to be quite unpopular I did not like the season change I wasn't a big fan of that when we went from season one to one plus 
uh it just didn't feel good to me it was very grindy it was basically doing the same content over and over and over again i didn't like that and i would hate to see that come to rise of kingdoms we already basically have that with the lost kingdom right with kbk uh, and i think i'd much prefer that it's much much better and even that like clearing the fog and stuff i hate doing it okay so please no home kingdom resets that would be absolutely abysmal just just no and number five is moving too far into human history and by that i mean implementing commanders like George Washington for example like I don't know to me that just seems way too recent you know the late 1700s early 1800s um I don't really I haven't gone in to check to see what the basically newest or youngest uh commander is in the game I haven't done the math but needless to say uh, I think commanders like George Washington like no I don't know it just seems to me like that would be way too recent for rise of kingdoms and it would sort of break the immersion right I I know that there's already a big swath of history that is covered by a lot of these commanders right you have I mean obviously you have the Byzantine Empire you have Rome and you also have ancient Greece right so I mean right there is like an insane amount of time that that is covered uh but I just I think that there's there's enough of a time frame uh where we can use those commanders from the past and the game can sort of make them mythical in a way right like it kind of makes them you know they're so old that they're sort of shrouded in mystery and the game can take its creative license and implement them in ways that you know makes them really cool and makes them not only figures that you recognize but also figures that have enough mystery around them to have a creative license right and I think that that is very important and if you start to add commanders that are like George Washington that are a little bit too new in my opinion like we kind of know everything about them and in that same note you know if we added like you know City Hall 30 right like that would be a game breaker uh because if you take a look here you know th there's different um ages that you unlock and we're in the feudal age right now and I would hate to go beyond the feudal age I don't want to see what's after that I don't want there to be like guns like handguns in rise of kingdoms I know that we have like cannons and stuff like that with Mehmed right obviously but I don't want to see literal like pistols and like machine gun like no just no 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 please no anyway guys that is my wish list for rise of kingdoms for its five year anniversary i would love to hear from you guys in the comment section below things that you want to see come to the game in the next five years do you want to see things not come to the game please let me know in the comments section below and while you're down there I want to remind you of my giveaway for the month of August click that link in the description while you're down there drop a thumbs up on the video it really helps out the channel a ton of helps get this video out into the YouTube algorithm so other rise of kingdoms players might see it subscribe to the channel and click the bell to be notified the next time I upload a rise of kingdoms video and with that being said guys thank you so much for watching this has been Omniarch I will talk to you guys again soon peace